What trends should be on your radar for 2019? Is pop-up video taking over political news reporting? Is Instagram fueling fashion memes? We'll look at these topics and much more on Disruptive FM, episode 28. Roll the title. It's Disruptive it's FM. Disruptive it's FM. Disruptive it's FM. Disruptive FM. Welcome to Disruptive FM, where business and culture collide. Sponsored by Microsoft and Branding Strategy Insider, with your host, Jeffrey Colon. Okay, here we go. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Disruptive FM, episode 28, for the week ending Friday, the 30th of November, 2018. One more month until 2019. I'm Jeffrey Colon, your host for the next quarter hour, as we examine the culture of business and check out the latest news in marketing, tech, media, and popular culture. Switch that gear. Here are this week's trending topics. Connecting the dots. We do a lot of trend soul searching on this show because we don't just want to understand technology or people. We want to understand technology and its effect on the behavior of people. Now, there are a lot of trend hunters out there but not many of them have the pedigree of our next guest. John Chambers is the author of the book, Connecting the Dots, Lessons for Leadership in a Startup World. He also was the longtime CEO of Cisco, a company we shouldn't take lightly as it is a huge player in the enterprise tech space. John is keeping busy these days as a venture capitalist, trying to find the future by investing in the next disruptive startups. Here's what he told us exclusively for Disruptive FM on what to watch as we enter 2019. We spoke with John on a good old fashioned landline telephone earlier this week. In terms of the areas that I'm looking at technology wise, social media is a huge area of interest to me in terms of how you interface to customers different than before. I'll share with you each one. I'm Sprinkler, a company out in New York. Raji Thomas, the CEO, really wickedly smart guy, very effective ways of interfacing in a different way to customers, which major companies like uh, Microsoft and Nike clearly understand by using 24 different social media outlets, are they able to see what are the trends going on from the consumer well before it becomes obvious that the consumer looks on a website, et cetera, or not. Security is about as hot as it gets. I have five startups in security, ranging from uh, a voice authentication, a pin drop in Atlanta that does fraud detection originally. Now they're doing overall voice authentication. And contrary to what I said last time about voice being free, voice actually is going to be the next platform, both in your home, in your car, etc. as we move forward. I'm doing a lot around the Internet of Things, everything from uh, a combination of drone detection with a company called D-Drone uh, that literally is probably the top rank ability to see drones of where they're traveling or not. I'm in a no-fly zone and yet I've had 546 drones come over in my house in the last seven months uh, in a no-fly zone so you can imagine what kind of interesting things that creates. Solving ag tech uh, with crickets, uh, perhaps solving world hunger and making crickets the next, if you will, major protein source, the next lobsters of our life. We'll see how that goes on it. Then security areas such as uh, voice authentication that I said a pin drop, but also a secure sleeve that you put your iPhone into and eventually your Android that might be the hottest uh, next transition in the mobile marketplace for areas such as corporations or defense, etc. on it. And that's kind of a, a quick, very high rundown, open, transparent government. But if you think about Internet of Things, computing moving to the edge, data center evolution, security are the key cornerstones. I move on technology and business changes. That was John Chambers, chairman emeritus of Cisco and author of the book Connecting the Dots on what to pay attention to in 2019. Let's just say it's going to be an interesting year once again, filled with change. Trending Topics on DFM. Pop-Up Politics. Hey, remember Pop-Up Video on VH1? It was a show that played videos and then popped up facts in a little bubble throughout those videos. It was a lot of fun. A dopamine rush and something to watch late at night when suffering from insomnia. 
In our Everything is a Remix world, that concept is now being used by CNN for an entirely new reason. Not to entertain, but to refute when politicians lie. CNN has taken its fact-first branding to a new level. In the form of these fact-checking sidebars. That's right. During the first White House press briefing in nearly a month, CBS News' Stephen Portnoy quizzed Press Secretary Sarah Sanders about the Trump administration's rejection of a key climate change report. During Sanders' response, which centered around what she called the administration's focus on ensuring America has the cleanest air and cleanest water, and ironically calling the report not data-driven, CNN pushed her image aside for a bulleted pop-up list. Now, this list featured the CNN logo and a large facts first heading, followed by three points about the report's background. Is it possible that CNN takes this new pop-up concept to a whole other level by analyzing these press briefings after the fact with a social by design interactive display? In a world overtaken with news feeds, overflowing with information, this could be a playful way to keep the powers that be in check. Trending topics on DFM. Memogram. Instagram is used in so many different ways than it was originally intended that now it's become a place for the hottest political and social memes. But now it's taken that even a step further by taking fashion, which dominates the platform, merging that with meme culture, which also is dominating the platform, and running that all the way to the bank. Brands and products that went viral or became internet memes have not only become talking points this past year, they've also seen an increase in sales. The latest year in fashion list from global fashion search engine List that's spelled L-Y-S-T, suggests that looking, laughing out loud, and then buying could become more of a thing. Here are some of the extraordinary fashion items that turned internet heads this year. We had the high-heeled Crocs trend, and nearly every item in Balenciaga's collection was really popular. Also, Kanye West's tiny Yeezy sliders that he was caught wearing and a giant straw Yaquemus hat. Should this really be surprising that fashion memes are leading to actual sales? After all, with the conjoint effect in full effect, this is the practice of people, brands, celebrities, and content creators all acting like each other and stealing each other's tricks. A lot of fashion items are now totally inspired by the internet and meme culture. Internet culture is informing design. Design is driving internet culture. The two are now inseparable. Customers have more control as they can now make their own trends, set their own agendas, and share what they like. And that's how meme fashion was born. Thanks again, Instagram. Oops. Apologies. Insta meme. You are listening to Disruptive FM with Jeffrey Cologne. Now, here comes the music. Here comes the music. Here comes the music. Here comes the music. It's Disruptive FM, the culture of business, brought to you by Microsoft Advertising and Branding Strategy Insider. I'm Jeffrey Cologne. Reach out and touch us on social media. The Instagram and Twitter handle is at Disruptive FM. Connect with me personally on Instagram or Twitter at DJ GEO FFE. And for more in-depth analysis of some of these topics, check out BingAds.com slash Intelligence Search and BrandingStrategyInsider.com. 
and create better video with iographer they make accessories for your mobile devices so you can make professional quality videos using your mobile phone learn more about all the products we use here at dfm at iographer.com in the background new music from anchor song with testimony the leatherette remix that's from anchor song's new album cohesion which takes inspiration from 1970s and 80s Bollywood film soundtracks, using traditional Indian percussion to create a psychedelic blend of world and electronic dance music. Anchor Song, Cohesion, out now on True Thoughts. It's almost Christmas, people, and that means a lot of electronic goods being bought and sold. Well, which ones are hot? Let's find out. Hey, nerds! Listen up. Disruptive FM presents the new Hootie Who in Turned Up Tech. Hootie Who! Geargasm. Shut up and take my money. Holiday shoppers plan to load up on consumer electronics this year with big screen TVs among the most sought after items. And is it surprising in our bigger is better culture that people want the biggest and best TV that they can have in their living room right now? Of course not. Retailers are promoting 4K ultra high definition big screen TVs at aggressive price points. For instance, the 65 inch 4K Roku smart TVs from Sharp and TCL are now only $398. That's 20% off their regular price. And the sweet spot for television screen sizes this holiday season is the 55 incher. Most TVs of that size and larger are now 4K models. Among newer categories of tech products, the fastest growing gadgets include smart speakers, smartwatches, and wireless earbuds. You know, those things that make it look like you have a Q-tip stuck in your ears. U.S. sales of smart speakers, such as the Amazon Echo device and Alphabet's Google Home, are projected to hit 22 million units this holiday season. That would be a 44% increase over last year's holiday season. Now, why the major growth? Both Amazon and Google have a vested interest in driving the installed base larger and larger. They want to become the go-to platform for controlling the smart home. And that begins with the smart speaker. Following our theme of convergence, this year, we will see more smart speakers with displays, such as the Amazon Echo Show, Google Home Hub, and Facebook Portal. The rise of smart speakers is fueling sales of other smart home devices, including security cameras and video doorbells. That's partly because devices like smart thermostats, lighting, and door locks can be controlled with voice commands through smart speakers. By the way, as an aside, if you want to listen to us on your smart speaker, simply say Alexa or Hey Google, play Disruptive FM podcast. Okay. Time now to check out some brewing stories you should have your eye on. It's a segment called On the Radar. Here's what's on our radar. Here's what's on our radar. Number one. The political website Mike.com has shut down. A victim of mismanagement, over-reliance on Facebook video, and a misunderstanding of who their audience actually was because they were renting their audience instead of owning it. This is a bigger tale, though. It's not just about one site closing down, but the fact the era of growing a brand on Facebook is pretty much over. There's not growth there because it's costly. And Facebook Watch, the video portal Facebook is trying desperately to get us to watch, misdiagnosed who is interested in Facebook. It's not millennials, but old people. And thus, the shows being created there are for people over the age of 55, not Mike's target audience. Mike was valued one time at a hundred million dollars. It sold this past week for five million dollars to bustle. Maybe it takes more than being a millennial with a lot of venture capital to be successful. Maybe it takes vision. Number two. Calculator watch fans rejoice. There's a new contraption that makes your wrist wear a little more useful. Audio Weld has made what it claims is the first synthesizer watch which is appropriately named SynthWatch. The Husky contraption offers a set of seven keys for capturing tunes using a companion app for iOS and Android phones. 
With that software, you can control recording, access a sequencer, and tap into a bank of 200 sounds. Of course, Tiny Instruments work on its own, too. And you don't need to have your phone out to use it. Number three. Who's worth the most now? Apple was. But then along came Microsoft. Disclaimer, my employer. But let's look at this even deeper. For a long period of time, the street was going nuts over FANG, or F-A-A-N-G. Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, and Google. But now here comes Maco, M-A-C-O. Microsoft, Apple, Cisco, and Oracle. Yes, all the old tech stalwarts seem to be the go-to companies to invest in again. As we always like to say here on DFM, everything is a remix. That's a wrap for our 28th episode of DFM. Big thanks to our guest, John Chambers, author of Connecting the Dots. Follow me on Twitter or Instagram at DJ G-E-O-F-F-E. Follow Disruptive FM on Twitter or Instagram at Disruptive FM. And you can read more in-depth content via our three sponsors, bingads.com slash intelligence search, brandingstrategyinsider.com, and iographer.com. Next week, Taylor Lawrence of The Atlantic is back because I have coffee with her in New York City. We'll talk about Amazon Teen and the ethical issues of targeting those under the age of 18. And in two weeks, we review the trends of 2018 and predict the trends of 2019 with our contributor at large, the real Cheryl Barbie of FCB Global. Until then, for everyone here at DFM, thanks for cranking it to 11 with us. I'm Jeffrey Colon. We'll catch you later. You've been listening to Disruptive FM with Microsoft Communications designer Jeffrey Cologne. All thoughts are his own. Disruptive FM is produced in Los Angeles by Feeler Media. Baby, let's start a la la la.